One of the basic raw materials for heavy industry is coal. The mines of France do not produce enough to supply the country's factories, so every year millions of tons are imported from the nearby Ruhr Valley in Germany. But France has tremendous quantity of material upon which heavy industry depends. Over half of Europe's iron deposits are located in France, most of them in the old province of Lorraine. The iron ore lies deep underground at some distance from the bottom of the shafts. The ore in the Lorraine mines is low grade. But, although the mines have been operated for many years, the deposits are still abundant. From the mines, the ore is taken a short distance to the smelters. On the plains and uplands of Western Europe, railroad building has been possible on a large scale. Railroads carry urgent freight, passengers and mail. Bulky cargoes are transported on canals and rivers. These railroads and waterways make up the most elaborate transportation network in the world. The Rhine is the most important river of the region. From Switzerland to Holland, it is a water route for the barges and cargo boats of many nations. The harbour of Strasbourg is connected with the Rhine by canals, which pass through the centre of the ancient city. Strasbourg is one of the principal ports of the Upper Rhine region. Oil and many other raw materials are shipped in and out of the city. Cargoes of chemicals such as salt and potash arrive in Strasbourg by train and are shipped out by barge because water travel is cheaper than rail transportation. Lumber from the forests of France and Germany is another commodity which leaves Strasbourg by barge. Strasbourg is the home port of many barge lines. When we captains return to the city after completing a job, we report to the headquarters where contracts for carrying freight are assigned. Here we choose the freight for which our barges are best suited. Some of us prefer certain routes to others. For his barge, the Caducée, Captain Oberfeld selects a cargo of coal for the city of Pont-à-Mousson. When Captain Oberfeld leaves Strasbourg aboard the Caducée, he will travel westward along the rhine marne Canal. Near Nancy, he will turn north along another canal which runs through the Moselle Valley to his destination at Pont-à-Mousson. Early in the morning, the captain has his barge at the coal yards, ready to take on cargo. The Caducée is specially designed for carrying coal. When the water level in the canals is low, barges cannot be loaded to capacity. The captain makes sure the holes are not too full. The faster a barge can be loaded and got underway, the better chance it has of arriving on schedule. When everything is secure, the Caducée leaves the harbour.
At the mouth of Strasbourg Harbor, the Caducée enters the Rhine Marne Canal. Though Western Europe has many mines and factories, there are also extensive farmlands. The level fields along the canal banks are ploughed in autumn and made ready for spring planting when the ground thaws. Captain Oberfeld must steer the barge carefully because the canals are narrow and not very deep. In midwinter, there are heavy frosts in northern France. When there is ice on the canals, traffic is slowed down. But usually, the ice is not thick enough to stop navigation altogether. The barges are limited to a speed of about three miles an hour. If they go faster, the wash from their propellers damages the banks of the canal. Like many of us, Captain Oberfeld owns his own barge. His family makes up the crew of the Caducée. Julien, who is 16 years old, is the engineer. Madame Oberfeld keeps house in the snug living quarters. The captain's two daughters complete the family. Lucienne is old enough to help her mother, but Suzanne is only four. The railroad bridges which span the canals often serve the barge captains as bulletin boards. When we pass underneath, we often chalk up messages for one another. From our traveling homes, we watch the countryside and the activities ashore. Canal traffic is often delayed because the barges must pass through locks to get from one water level to another. When a lock is located in a town, Madame Oberfeld goes ashore to do her marketing and buy supplies. Because most of us have made the same trip so often, we know the shopkeepers in the communities along the route. Madame Oberfeld buys meat and groceries to last the family for several days. While she shops, the Caducée moves slowly along the canal through the center of town. When a barge has to be lifted to a higher level of the canal, the lower lock gates are closed behind it and water is let in. The lock gradually fills until the water level is even with the canal that lies ahead. When Madame Oberfeld has finished her shopping, the Caducée is ready to proceed on the next stage of its journey to Pont-à-Mousson. Madame Oberfeld makes efficient use of her small kitchen and feeds her family as well as if they lived ashore. Most of us keep pets on our boats. Since someone must always be at the wheel while the boat is moving, 
Julien takes over when his father goes below for dinner. Most of us, like the Oberfelds, have lived on barges all our lives. Captain Oberfeld comes from a family of sailors. His father and grandfather were also in the barge business. Julien plans to follow in the family footsteps. When Suzanne grows older, she will go to school in Strasbourg, as Lucienne did, and live with relatives for a few months of each year. When his father returns to the wheel, it is Julien's turn to have dinner. With only one assistant to help him operate the barge, the captain must be on duty practically all the time. Every time the Caduce stops at a lock, there is an opportunity to go ashore. Barges must carry their own supply of water for washing, cooking and drinking. Because of frequent delays at the various locks, the Caduce makes an average of only 13 to 18 miles a day. Today, the Caduce can go straight through the locks because there are no other barges ahead. So far on this trip, Captain Oberfeld has been able to keep ahead of his schedule. When the weather is clear and sunny, Lucien does the family washing. On one part of the route to Pont-à-Mousson, the Rhine-Marne Canal goes through a hilly region. Here the canal passes through a tunnel which connects one valley with another. The tunnel is narrow and the barge must be steered carefully. Once inside, the engines are turned off and the Caduce is towed through by a small electric locomotive which runs along a track at the side of the tunnel. <laughs> Railroads, as well as barges, pass through tunnels in the hilly regions of this part of France. Low-cost barge traffic has made possible the expansion of heavy industry along the inland waterways of Western Europe. Because raw materials for chemical plants, as well as coal and ore for iron and steel mills, can be delivered from the mines cheaply, a large number of manufacturing towns and cities have grown up over a wide area. Without cheap water transportation, many of these towns and cities could not have become industrial centers. Glassworks and toys use special sands and clays which are found in other parts of France. These materials are brought by barge to northeastern France where there is coal. Our skilled workers make excellent pottery and fine china, much of which is sold in foreign lands. First, the pieces are shaped from wet clay.
After they have been baked to make them hard, they are decorated. Then they are fired again to give them a glaze. Near the city of Nancy, the Oberfels begin the last part of their journey. From here, the Caducé heads north. The barge passes over the Moselle River by means of an aqueduct or water bridge. On the sixth day, the Caducé approaches the industrial town of pont à mousson the end of its 90-mile journey from Strasbourg. Captain Oberfeld has made the run to pont à mousson many times before and knows how to make his way through the traffic of this busy inland port. Caducé will dock at the coke plant until her cargo is unloaded. As soon as the holes are empty, the Caducé will pick up another cargo to take back to Strasbourg. Throughout Alsace-Lorraine, the Ruhr Valley, the Saar Basin and other parts of industrial Western Europe, barges like the Caducé carry raw materials to thousands of mills and factories along the inland waterways. While the Caducé and other barges are being unloaded, trains are bringing iron ore from nearby mines to the smelting plants of Pont-à-Mousson. The coal to be used in the smelting process is made into coke. It is first heated to drive out the gases and then quenched with water. Coke is the fuel commonly used in the process of extracting iron from ore. The burning coke melts the mixture of iron ore and crushed limestone in the blast furnace. The molten iron is drawn from the bottom of the furnace and made into steel or cast iron products. Cast iron pipes are made by whirling the molten metal against the inner walls of a steel mold. The machine spins until the cast iron is hard enough to be withdrawn from the mold in the form of pipe. The iron and steel products made at the mills in Pont-à-Mousson and other manufacturing centers are used in the countries of Western Europe and throughout the world. The network of railroads and canals over which these products are moved has played an important part in the development of European industry. But the continuous operation of this industry depends on the millions of people who run the machines in mines and factories and keep the trains and barges moving. Men like Captain Oberfeld are doing an important job. Only because of them and their barges can traffic flow along the inland waterways so necessary to the immense productivity of industrial Western Europe.